So I know I said I'd come back with a part two. So this is the part two on patella tendinopathy and treatment. Let's go. And just as a disclaimer, I don't want to sound too preachy, but you can't expect every recipe exercise program to have the same success for every single person because all of us are different and all of us will respond to different treatments, different intensities, different um, exercises. At the same time, before you try any of the ex exercises, do seek some professional clarification just to make sure that your biokinematics are correct. Um, even, and you know, that's the barriers of doing exercise programs through the phone. You know, can't see, can't see you. I can't, I can't make sure that, I can't make sure you're safe. And yeah, dude. Take it easy and you know, if you goof up, then you know, that's on you, that's on you, man. I'm out, I'm out. I'm so, just to recap regarding tendinosis, not to get confused with tendinitis because those are two different things. One, tendinosis is a degenerative condition of the tendon due to overload, largely due to poor biokinematics um, when you're running, jumping, squatting, whatever. Two, three, Wait, I wasn't even done. Right, so this is how you treat patella tendinopathy and there are three concepts that you like legit need to know about. One is eccentric exercises. So this is basically coming from a contracted position into a lengthened position. And some people call it negative exercises. Negative? Negative? Yeah, negative exercises. Whatever you want to call it. Basically, it has a higher potential for greater muscle tendon loading and type 2 fiber hypertrophy. Two, isometric exercises. So these are when you're contracting without changing the angle of your knee. And basically it's associated with the analgesic effect. And three, lastly, is fixing up your biokinematics of squats, jumping, landing, whatever is the original issue that transpired your patella tendinopathy. So I take inspiration from three different exercise programs. So the Stanish and Kerwin protocol, the heavy slow resistance program, and the Maliaris program. So definitely if you want to consolidate a more holistic picture of treatment for patella tendinopathy, do hit one of these OGs up. They're basically the kings of tendinopathy. So the first thing you want to do is warming up. So what that includes is stretching. Um, all right, that's two stretches. Yo, what the? What the heck? What? What? The, yo. Yeah, that that's not even warming up your quads anymore. That he he's not even trying anymore. I'm scared. Uh, oh. All right, I'm warm. I'm warm, I'm warm. No, but seriously, you wanna do static quad and hamstring stretches, uh, 10 reps each, holding for 10 to 20 seconds for each leg. Lightless, painless jogging on the spot. After that, you wanna do three times 10 squats from an elevated seat, as long as it's painless. Progressively, as you get better in your program, you're gonna be putting more into your warm-up program and putting harder exercises into your warm-up program so much as they're painless. Now for your routine in weeks one and two, you wanna be doing ice quad isometrics at zero degrees extension and 30 degrees flexion. Do four sets of five holds for 30 seconds and take 30 seconds rest in between each hold. These isometric holds will give you an analgesic effect. And once you start doing these isometrics, um, they might initially hurt a tiny bit, but then you'll gradually normalize towards that pain. After that, you want to be doing four sets of 15 rep heel slides just to get used to uh, flexion and extension of your knee. And then after that, you want to be doing four sets of 15 rep squats or assisted squats. So if you can go to the gym, you want to be proficient with your leg press, squats, and hack squats. Those are the main three machines that you'll be using. For weeks three to 12, I'll give you the gym version first and then the home alternative if you don't have access to the gym. So for the third week, I'm actually a tiny bit more lenient. Um, you want to go to the gym, go to your squats, and you want to be able to do 15 reps for four sets of any weight. 
If you don't feel confident with using a bar for the first time, even just doing the bar itself for a back squat, that, that's a good starting weight to, to come into. So ideally, four sets of 15 with three minutes rest in between each set, and you're expected to increase your weight every two weeks. And for every two weeks that you increase the weights that you are squatting or leg pressing, you want to decrease the number of reps you do per set. So for your fourth to fifth week, you want to be doing 10 rep max, six to eight, eight rep max, and then nine to 12, you want to be doing a six rep max squat or whatever. Also for each rep that you perform during this heavy slow resistance program, make sure you're counting to three on the way down. So counting to three as you go into that squat position and counting to three as you extend out of that squat position. Make sure that your pain when you do the lifts do not cross a four out of 10 pain threshold and that pain threshold is subjective. Towards the end of the program by say weeks eight or nine, assuming that your squat technique, your leg press technique, your hack squat techniques are all perfect and you, you've continued to sharpen your technique, you should actually be painless by weeks eight or nine. And the reason we wanna go beyond nine weeks is because we wanna make sure that we're fully conditioned and fully ready to go back into those explosive sports that we play. Now, if you don't have exposure to the gym, there's always a home exercise program that you can do. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is four sets of 25 TheraBand single leg press. So for our four sets of 25 TheraBand leg press, I found out that if I were to do it straight, in a linear way, it would actually bias my rec fem and create more pain for me. So what I did was I tilted my leg to a 30 to 45 degree angle so I would bias my VMO instead and that actually made a big difference on the pain threshold. So if that works for you, definitely give it a try. Next you want to be doing four sets of 25 squats, progressing to modified squats, progressing to negative single leg squats, and then finally single leg squats on the affected leg. So for the gym and the home exercise program, you want to perform it like almost three to four times a week, giving yourself a tiny bit of break in between. Ideally, at the same time, do make sure that you are fixing your biokinetics. So those who jump and land with a straight leg, that's gonna be sent driving a lot of ground reaction forces up your patellar tendon. Those who are squatting and their knees go way out over their toes, that is gonna be over working your rec fem. Uh, those are gonna be the main issues that you wanna target. Your exercise program is just to facilitate your tenocytes working away at the type three collagen and then your tenoblast giving back in the correct types of collagen so these are just there to facilitate you as you recover know that the patella tendinosis doesn't actually heal by itself it's not self-limiting so you do need to end up doing some exercise in order to rehabilitate your knee so yeah that's the end of the video um, hope you enjoyed it and i would have loved to actually filmed some gym parts of the video at an actual gym with actual squat um, you know, leg press, hack squat equipment, but uh, you know, your boy, your boy kind of broke over here, so you know, he's, he's not really making any gym videos anytime soon.